We're back with our study on hypothesis testing. In the last lesson, we talked about how to set up the null and the alternate hypotheses. And today we're going to be talking about significance levels and decision rules. And yeah, we're kind of skipping the test distributions for now, but don't worry, we'll come back to it. First, a little bit of review. In the last unit, we learned about confidence intervals. And part of the formula for those was working with these critical Z values. The Z value that we used in our formula depended on which confidence level we were working with. In hypothesis testing, we're working with significance levels, either 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01. And you should notice that these pair up nicely as complements to the confidence levels. Because in confidence levels, we were working with nearness, or how close we could get to a real population value. In hypothesis testing, we're actually looking for extremes. So these significance levels, we call them alpha, and they help us to determine one of two approaches to decision rules, the p-values. A p-value, or a probability value, is the probability of obtaining results at least as extreme as the results actually observed. In the process of our hypothesis testing, we're going to calculate a p-value that we compare to our significance level. And this comparison will tell us if we either reject the null hypothesis, declare it to be untrue, or fail to reject the null, declaring it to be true. In other words, we're going to say if p is less than alpha, we're going to reject the null. If p is greater than or equal to alpha, we'll fail to reject the null. And this is called our decision rule. So let's add that to our toolbox. We calculate p-values from the calculated test statistics. Now, that's part of step five. So for the sake of today's lesson, we're just gonna practice with calculated z-values that I give you. If you'll recall from our previous lesson, there are three types of hypothesis tests, right-tailed, left-tailed, and two-tailed. I'd like to show you a right-tailed test at the 0 0.05 significance level. So let's see what this looks like. We need a normal curve. And if this is a right-tailed test, we're looking for extremes on the right side of the curve. And this is what we call the rejection region. At the 0 0.05 significance level, the area here is 0 0.05. So that now becomes part of our decision rule. If P is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null. If P is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null. So now we need a calculated test statistic. In this case, I'll say z equals 2.23. Next, we'll look at the probability of getting a z value of at least 2.23 or above. So here's our normal curve. Here is z of 2.23. And if you pull out your TI 83 or 84, you can find the area under the curve from a lower bound of 2.33 and up. And we get an area of oh, about 0 0.013. That's the p-value. So let's zoom into our decision rule. p is 0 0.013, and we're comparing that to 0.05. In this case, then, p is less than 0 0.05, so we reject the null. Let's try a left-tailed test at the 0.1 significance level. We'll pull up our normal curve so that we can see what the rejection area looks like. In this case, we've got 0 0.10 area of rejection, which means our decision rule this time is if p is less than 0 0.10, we reject the null. If p is greater than or equal to 0 0.10, we fail to reject the null. And this time, we'll use a calculated test statistic of negative 0.98. So the probability of getting a z value of negative 0.98 or less, 
we need our 83 or 84 calculator or another software with an upper bound of negative 0.98. And we find the area under the curve here to be 0 0.0164. That is now our p-value. We'll put that into our decision rule. And we know that 0.164 is greater than 0 0.10. So we will fail to reject the null. Let's do one more. We're finally going to try a two-tailed test, and let's go back to the 0 0.05 significance level. Here's our normal curve, but with a two-tailed test, we have two rejection regions. Half of our significance level is at the top, and half of it is at the bottom. Our decision rule, though, stays the same. If p is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null. If p is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject. This time we'll use z equals 1.7. And the probability of calculating a z value of 1.7 or more, with a lower bound of 1.7, we get about 0 0.046. This is now half of our p-value because this is a two-tailed test. So before we jump into our decision rule, we have to multiply this by 2. 0 0.046 times 2 is 0 0.092, and that is what we use in our decision rule. So comparing that to 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null. So that's your like crash course in decision rules and p-values. And we still haven't gotten to an actual problem, but next time I promise, we will. Thanks for being here.